All right, welcome to part two of everything you need to know to file for Social Security uh, survivor benefits. Uh, if you're watching this video without watching the first one, make sure you go back to uh, the first one and uh, learn how who is qualified to receive benefits, how much you're going to receive uh, working, and a whole bunch of other insider tips, tricks, and secrets. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Ed Weir, retired district manager of the Social Security Administration, help people throughout the uh, the country get everything they're entitled to. So make sure you subscribe and comment and like and all that kind of good stuff. But let's get right into it. Common question I get is, uh, well, can I get survivor benefits forever? Possibly. If uh, let's go into how surviving benefits will stop. As we talked about in the uh, at the very end of the last video, one reason they would stop is if you are working and in and working over the annual earnings limit. If you're you know filing before your full retirement age, then that is definitely one way the Social Security benefits, uh, surviving benefits, would stop. As in all benefits, retirement, spousal benefits. If you're under your full retirement age, then they will stop. All right. What about some of the other reasons your survivor benefits would stop. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen and uh, go through them one by one. So if you are a surviving spouse or even a surviving divorced spouse, if you remarry, your benefits will stop. However, that's only if you rem remarry before the age of 60, uh, age 50 if, uh, if you're on disability. So they cannot receive survivor benefits while they're married if they marry before the age of 60. If they remarry, if a surviving spouse or surviving divorced spouse remarries after they reach 60 or age 50, if they have a disability, they will continue to be eligible for benefits on that social security record. So if you remarry after 60, then you can continue benefits. Another way, obvious way that your survivor benefits would stop is if there's more money on your own record. So if you're just receiving survivor benefits and it's $1,200 and you have waited to file for your own retirement benefits on your own record and now you're you know 67 or 68 or 70 and benefits on your own is $2,000, then you just file on your own and then the surviving benefits will stop and you'll just receive benefits on your own record. What about Medicare while you're receiving survivor benefits? So a lot of people don't know and they've been missing out is obviously if you're on retirement benefits on your own record, once you hit 65, about 100 days before you reach the 65th birthday, Medicare will send you your whole packet with uh, you know Medicare Part A and Part B and everything. And people say, well, I am not insured under my own record, so I won't get Medicare at 65. And yes, you will. You can get it off of the worker's record. So you will get Medicare just as someone that is receiving retirement benefits on their own record. So about 100 days before you turn 65, make sure uh, Social Security has your correct address. So always make sure Social Security has your correct address. And that way, if something like that pops up, you're aware of it and that the Medicare card goes to the right place. And obviously, um, Medicare is great, uh, but there's a lot of limitations. There's a lot of gaps. There are six major financial gaps that uh, you'll be responsible for. The big one is Part B. There's a 20% gap. So anything, you got a $100,000 know, surgery bill, you have to come up with $20,000. So a lot of people get some type of supplemental plan to fill in those gaps. And if you need help with that, click the link below and we can have someone on my Medicare team reach out to you and uh, go over all your options. It's a completely free service and uh, we'll get you set up. Here is a tricky thing for you divorced surviving spouses out there that uh, your ex-spouse just might have tried to trick you with. And there are probably hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out there that are struggling to survive every day because they are under the misconception that their divorce decree, you know, is actually worth something in this regard. And I've seen it way too many times. Basically what it is, is you get divorced and your ex-spouse puts in your divorce decree that you'll get nothing. You don't get the house, you don't get the car. Okay, we'll, we'll give you the 1972 Chevy Chevelle, whatever the case may be. But you're not gonna get my retirement benefits and you're not, you know, my 401k and you're not gonna get my social security benefits. And you think that is the reality, but in fact, it's not. 
I have adjudicated, I've taken hundreds of thousands of survivor claims, and I've seen that thousands of thousands of times, and here's how it works. I talking to the individual, talking to the surviving spouse, and I get all the information. Uh, when were you married to this person? Okay, I, I need the uh, the marriage certificate. Okay, here's the marriage certificate. I look at the, the names on the marriage certificate. I look in the dates. Okay, you were married in uh, 1980. Okay, now I need the divorce decree. Okay, I get the divorce decree. I look at the names. I look at the day of divorce, the date of divorce. Okay, you were divorced in 1990. So you're married at least 10 years. That's it. I don't look at anything else. Sometimes, okay, to be totally honest, Sometimes I like to look at those old divorce decrees, you know, for 20 or 30 years ago and see how much, you know, that Chevy Chevelle actually was, you know, it was worth, you know, $1,200 at that time. But in terms of you'll never get any of my social security benefits, that's worth nothing. That's toilet paper, completely useless. Divorce is a state legal issue. Social security administration is federal, it's national. So that type of arrangement means nothing. So please, 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 there's th I know there's thousands of people out there. So you might know someone that is, is struggling and you talk to them and say, how come you didn't get survivor benefit? Well, because they put in my divorce, I couldn't get them. No, 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 no. Call Social Security now. And most importantly, call Social, uh, watch my video on protective filing because I've had this happen several times. I've found people tens of thousands of dollars. If you call Social Security a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and you're given incorrect information or whatever the case may be, um, you can call today and say, okay, I want, you know, I, I was given inf incorrect information. I went into your office and this, that, and the other. And, um, but now I've learned because I was watching Ed's YouTube channel. I, I subscribed to him and he's awesome. Um, anyway, and I now know that that was incorrect. So I'd like to go ahead and start those benefits. And is there any way that protective filing from a year, two years, three years ago, is there any way we can go back to that time? And if the claim specialist says, well, you can't because of this, that, and the other, uh, I would double check. Say, okay, well, that's uh, um, interesting, but can you have a technical expert check that out to make sure I, that isn't, as we call it in Social Security, an open lead that the uh, the issue wasn't closed out correctly. Um, it doesn't hurt to try. I've found people tens of twenty, sixty three thousand dollars. Um, so anyway, so there's that. So the divorce decree, what's written on the divorce decree? The only again, super long story short, I kind of diverged there a little bit. I have a tendency to go off on a tangent. I'm a university professor after all as well, um, but. The only thing, the divorce decree, the names, married to this person, this person, date of divorce, that's all that matters. Since we're on divorced surviving spouse, way too many times I've heard this, and I hate to hear this, is I talk to someone and they say, um, no, um, my ex-spouse um, has remarried and he has children, so I don't want to you know, affect that and get involved in this and, you know, take money from the children, they'll never know. Again, I've done this hundreds of thousands of times. We don't call the, the worker, the, the ex-spouse and say, Hey, you're, you know, you're, you know, you, you remember that person you were married to in your twenties and stuff? Well, they're going to file for benefits on your record. No, we don't do that. They will never, ever, ever know. And it doesn't affect their benefit amount. If that uh, their ex-spouse, uh, the let's say the husband is receiving a couple thousand dollars and the wife is receiving a thousand dollars. And let's say there's a couple of kids receiving a few thousand dollars and you file for benefits. Remember that the, in my first video, I talked about a family max, the maximum you can pay out on a family that doesn't apply for surviving or surviving spouses or auxiliary spouses or current spouses that the person is still married those never touch. So one will never know. So I, so I hate to hear that. Um, and, and, and there's some people that say, I just hate that person so much. I don't want anything from them. And I try to convince them, well, it's not really from them. It's from 
the Social Security Administration, it's their FICA taxes, it's your entitlement, it's not really from that person that you hate, I understand that. And uh, yeah, I've uh, sometimes I've won those battles and sometimes I haven't. And uh, some people said, I tried to convince them, you know, again, it's not from that person. I know you understand it, but anyway. The things that people ask is, uh, um, I've done several videos on how to make sure your social security monthly benefit is correct. And some of the things I do is, you know, make sure your earnings record is correct and make sure they include all your uh, military service and a bunch of other things. But uh, um, the most important thing is to make sure you, the earnings record is correct for the person you're receiving benefits. So if you're filing for retirement benefits on your own, you know, go into ssa.gov, set up an account, make sure your work history is correct, how much you pay into social security your entire life, because the high 35 years is what they determine how much your monthly benefit amount is. The problem with divorced spouse benefits is it's pretty much almost impossible to figure that out. So if you were married to someone you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, how do you check to make sure they're, the benefit amount you're getting from them is correct? Well, you you know, I've never seen anybody able to do that because you might be able to get access to the record and see how much they paid in Social Security. But unless you were very, very close to that individual and you have the tax documents, it would be almost impossible to, uh, to correct it. So, you know, you say, oh, hey, there's a gap here in 1982. And, you know, you'd have to fix that. You'd provide, have to provide some type of documentation. And if you know anybody that's ever done that, uh, then, uh, then comment down below. Uh, but that's a very unusual circumstance. People often ask about common law marriages. So if you were married to someone, but it was common law, according to your state, how is that treated? Well, it depends on your particular state. In that particular case, the federal government has to go by the state law. So unlike uh, the other situation, the other uh, example I just gave you about the divorce decree and you know not getting your benefits uh, in terms of common law. So if your particular state recognizes common law and you were a, had a common law marriage to that person for 10 years or longer, then you would very well be entitled to benefits. So you would have to uh, you know, go to Social Security Administration and the people in those particular states know um, it's, if it's a common law state and they will walk you through the entire process, get the proofs and uh, get you your money. Another place that a lot of people are missing money is, is one of the problems of uh, Social Security is in my office, we had one person, they would get a, a printout of this like every month or every quarter or so, depending on what year. Um, but it's basically people that are on widow's benefits, survivor benefits, same thing um, in Social Security internally called WIB, uh, widow's insurance benefits. But anyway, survivor benefits. If you're on survivor benefits and you're getting $1,500, the Social Security Administration, the computer automatically runs the numbers. The, the big computer system runs the numbers every now and then, and they spit out a list and they send them to the local offices and say, hey, this person is receiving $1,500 from survivor benefits, but it looks like because they just reached their full retirement age or they're receiving you know, delayed retirement credits, this person is now eligible to get more money on their own record. So reach out to that person. So the employee reaches out to that person. And uh, again, all social security employees are pretty much uh, inundated and overworked. And there's just too much, uh, especially with the baby boomers coming up, sent out the letter to the last known address. And if so, this is another key to why you should always update your address with the social security administration. And if you're receiving Medicare, if you update your address with the social security administration, it also notifies Medicare. And that way there's no issues when you go to the doctor or something like that. Everything is, uh, is, uh, is updated. So, they send out a letter to your last known address and say, hey, you know, you're receiving survivor benefits, but it looks like there's more on your own. And once you go ahead and come on in and file applications, not automatic, you actually have to file an application to get that started. So if you know anybody that's uh, after, you know, over 70 years old, um, you know, they might have gotten full delayed retirement credits on their retirement benefits. And uh, so if they're struggling, tell them to, you know, call the 800 number 772-1213 and say, Hey, you know, I'm receiving, uh, you know, survivor benefits only. I never collected on my own. Um, is there more money there now? So it doesn't hurt to try, right? Okay. So the last 
part we're going to talk about is how actually to file, how to make your life easier and, uh, and get your money. Um, again, in the, uh, I'm going to add another video in the future based on your questions. So if you got any questions, make sure you put them down in the comments and I'll answer them at that time and I'll consolidate all those and I'll add another part three to this video series. And I'll, as always, I always keep a, an eye on uh, social security regulations. I've got a lot of, uh, people still in the agency that kind of feed me uh, kind of insider tips, tricks, and secrets. So if I get any of that, I will add that to part three as well. So, okay how to get your money. Um, if you're already on that worker's record, so if you were a spouse receiving spouse benefits from the worker's record, pretty much pretty much, you don't have to do anything. It's, it's a, an auto convert, as we call it internally. It converts automatically from spousal benefits to surviving spouse benefits and that beautiful, awesome $255 lump, chip, lump sum death benefit goes out at the same time. Um, and how does that work? When I was editing this video, I, uh, I, I forgot about one particular day when I worked the Social Security Administration. So I consider this the, uh, the gold standard. So I've taken tens of tens of thousands of survivor claims and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's never a good thing. Someone loses a loved one. Um, they're already, uh, you know, sad, depressed, stressed. And now they have to deal with all the legal issues and the bureaucratic issues. Well, then one day this, uh, this lady came in, she was uh, mid eighties and she had just lost her husband and they'd been high school sweethearts. So they'd been married for a very long time. And uh, she had a big notebook and she pulled it out, opened it up, and it had everything in there. It was, I mean, it was amazing. Usually people, you know, rush around. They don't know, okay, what am I going to do about this bank account? What am I going to This young lady of 85 years old had everything. She had the last will and testament. She had uh, bank documents. She had the death certificate, the newly uh, received uh, death certificate in there. Uh, mortgage, uh, everything, all organized. And I, and I looked at it. This is the first time I've ever, and I've only seen that once um, over decades. And uh, she said, yeah, yeah, he made it for me. And, uh, um, you know, even when he's not here, he's still looking out for me. You know, we took care of each other all of our lives. And uh, even when he's not here, he's, uh, he's got my back. So that is your mission is to go out there, Go to your local, you know, uh, office depot, wherever, and buy a three wing, uh, a three ring binder, and uh, just start filling it up with everything. And uh, um, and that way, when uh, the inevitable happens, it's going to happen to all of us. Um, your loved ones are prepared. That's it. When your loved one passes away, the funeral home or uh, the uh, the coroner's office or whatever state agency handles that in all the 50 states, they have a computer program, electronic system that interfaces with Social Security. So on the death certificate and everything, you always have to put your Social Security number on there. And that automatically goes into the Social Security database and then it stops those benefits. And then the computer system looks to see if there's anybody on that record. So if there's a spouse on that record, then it automatically switches it to uh, um, surviving spouse and your benefit amount gets bumped up and you get that extra $255. When your loved one passes away, just uh, you know, give it a, you know, a few days or a week or something like that and then check if you have direct deposit, which always is the best way to do it. If you have direct deposit, just go ahead and look in there and you'll see that uh, the, the check, um, your survivor check is in there. And one thing about survivor benefits is the person has to be alive the entire month. So if it's February 28th and the person passes away on February 27th, then they're not entitled to February benefits. So, but you know, the person passed away on February 27th. So the department of treasury, you know, it takes them a little while to get notified. So the February check will come in March. And they'll probably put that check in there. And what you do is just leave it in there. And the Department of Treasury, once they the computer system runs it, they will go in there and grab the money and uh, um, themselves. So you don't have to worry about it, return the money or anything like that. Just let 
the, the system kind of run out. So they, the person has to be alive the entire month. So if they make it all the way till, you know, all the, the entire month of February, February 28th or February 29th, if we're looking at a leap year, then they will be entitled to that benefit. If you're not on that record or you're a surviving divorced ex-spouse, then what you'll have to do is go uh, call the 800 number, 772-1213, um, or go online and file survivor and spouse claim. And if you call the 800 number, you can schedule an in-office appointment or you can, uh, you can uh, schedule a phone appointment. So they'll call you at your house at a particular time. So, uh, you know, make sure that you, you know, are there for the phone call. And what type of proofs do you need? If you're a divorced spouse, obviously you need is, as I mentioned, your marriage certificate and your divorce decree that you were married to that person for 10 years. Um, sometimes, never, never wait. Sometimes when a, uh, you know, if you say, okay, well, I I'm going to go ahead and wait because I don't have the proofs yet. No, 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 no. Wait, uh, don't, don't, don't wait. File. Because you're, you might be losing money. So if you wait until next month or two months from now, until you get the proofs, then you just might lose that. You might lose a month or two months of, of money. So call Social Security Administration, set up an appointment at the very least, and your appointment won't probably won't be for a month or two because of your crazy backlog. Um, and that way you're protected for that particular month. And then you can start getting your proofs. And if you go ahead and have your appointment and you still don't have your proofs, don't worry about it. Again, I've done this hundreds of thousands of times. Um, just go ahead and do your appointment and say, hey, yeah, I'm still waiting on my, uh, on my marriage certificate. It just might. Internal secret here that when your ex-spouse filed for benefits 10, 15, 20 years ago and the Social Security claim specialist asked them about previous marriages, they just might have said, oh, yeah, I was I was married to this one lady uh, when I was in the 30s, when I was in my 30s. And we married in, uh, you know, Memphis and uh, we married uh, about this time and stuff. And they just might be able to use that as proof of your marriage. So you might not even need a marriage certificate. So save yourself the money. So long story short, all my stories are long, but um, call, 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 call and set up a protective filing and then get your proofs and everything later. Um, one of the final things is um, for surviving spouses that are still married, divorce, or excuse me, the uh, death certificate. Don't worry, again, don't worry about the death certificate. I've seen too many people get, you know, those things are crazy expensive, what, 40, 50, 60 dollars or so. Um, and you say, well, I need a death certificate to give Social Security. No, you don't. 99% of the time you don't, because as I mentioned, they've got that electronic system where the, the coroner or the funeral home automatically notifies Social Security. So don't waste your money on a death certificate. You know, you can get it for other purposes, but Social Security probably won't need it. So save yourself the money. All right. As I mentioned with Social Security Administration, there's exceptions to the exceptions, the exceptions. There's all kinds of uh, interesting permutations and variables. The Social Security Administration policy is over 20,000 pages. So if you have a particular situation I haven't covered here today, make sure you put it in the comments. And then again, I'm going to consolidate all those and I'll put it in uh, video three and uh, we'll just keep uh, pumping away. And but the most important thing is make sure you get all the benefits you're entitled to. And please, please, please watch out for those people around you, the people that are struggling. Um, have them watch this video, share this video. Um, we need to get everybody out there all the benefits they need to survive on a daily basis and make sure you subscribe and share and like and because that even if you're not helping someone you don't know that you're you don't know anybody in particular to help by commenting and subscribing and liking and all that kind of good stuff it teaches the youtube youtube algorithm to send it out to more people and by you doing all that, it just might help some person that's struggling to survive in Jacksonville, Florida, or Dallas, or wherever, um, because YouTube shows them this video and they are able to find money and they have you to thank for it. All right, that's it. Have a beautiful day.